Oh lord, what the hell is this spray? What am I spray- What am I being sprayed with? Oh lord, I've been squirted on, and it's not even the type of squirt I like. Hello, Mr. Whiskers. Who's a pretty kitty? Juliana, yeah, Mr. Whiskers died last month. This is Scruffy, remember? Oh, of course. Silly me. Just let me have a look at the neural interface matrix, and I'm sure I can clear that. Uh... No. No, it's not that. Uh, I've just caught another cold. Probably something that got in when they sent Pearl out. Oh, God. Not this again. Last month you were convinced you had the measles. You're not a doctor. What would you even know about it? And besides, I think it may be malaria. <laughs> You're not even a doctor I either. A doctor. Yes, but not a real doctor. Robotics isn't an actual medical degree. Secondly, I've told you time and again, you can't get sick inside the suit. It's not physically possible. I know when I'm getting sick, Bert. Now why don't you just wander off and play in your lab? Mr. Scruffy and I are going to rewrite the will, so he will get everything when I die because horrible Bert didn't believe me. Oh, wow. God, Juliana. Oh, whatever. I'm going to the lab. Um. Did you need something? I heard that Juliana and Ezra had an argument a few days before he was found dead. Tell me about that. Well, I was in my lab at the time, so I didn't, didn't, didn't hear it. But Juliana has always been rather critical of Mr. Parker. I think she found something in the overseer's office. Uh, I wasn't listening when she told me about it. I, I kind of had my head in my research. I don't know, really. I try to let her handle all the money stuff. Oh, was there something else, a detective? Tell me about yourself. Oh, uh, well, I'm a scientist. Uh, you've probably met my wife, Juliana, already. Uh, not sure what else to say, really. Uh, was there something else, a detective? Bert is so distraught. Like, I can tell something's on his mind, but for some reason he just wants to just get this whole interview over with and be on with his day at the lab. Did you have any thoughts about the murder? Oh, well, that's not really my field of expertise, but I'm sure there are probably some clues at the crime scene. Oh, was there something else, a detective? Tell me about your research. Well, I was one of the leads on the team that created the first robo-brains, the precursors uh, to our model. Uh, most people don't find it all that interesting, and I, I'd rather not bore you. Oh, was there something else, a detective? Actually, I am more curious about your research. I'd like to hear more about your research. Oh, wonderful. Uh, no one else here really wants to talk about it. Functionally, this model is more or less the same as the previous versions I worked on, I've, but without the neural inhibitor and the reconditioning. The voice modulator uh, seems to have some minor issues interfacing with the neural matrix, uh, which can add some moodiness. Uh, but that's easily solved with regular tune-ups. Oh, was there something else, a detective? Robobrains have a voice modulator? Tell me about that. Uh, that's what allows us to recreate our original voices. They can mimic any normal human voice, actually. I've speculated for some time that the issues we had with our uh, uh, recruited subjects uh, is due to the brain attempting to preserve a sense of self. Uh, maintaining our original voices helps reinforce the neural network, uh, sort of like uh, playing music for an Alzheimer patient. Oh, was there something else, a detective? I'd like to hear more about your research. I'm afraid that's really all I should say about it. I mean, it is still classified, but I wanted to help with the investigation. Oh, was there something else, a detective? Never mind. Very well. I'll just get back to my work then.
First of all, I just can't stand the wheeling noise. And number two, is he stuck in the corner? Yeah, I'm just gonna mind my business. Now, Julie. Hello, detective. Did you have a question about the heinous murder? I love how you're wearing a mask, too. That's so funny. I heard you had a big fight with Ezra a few days ago. Care to explain? Oh, well, it wasn't that big a deal, really. He wanted more money to pay for repairs on the hotel. I wasn't feeling well that day and lashed out a bit at the poor man. I really should have listened to him more. What's with all the junk in here? These are our things. We're just waiting till the war blows over so we can bring them back to the mansion. But the war is over. What are you talking about? Never mind, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Tell me about yourself. I'm Juliana Riggs, heiress to the Riggs fortune and wife of Bert Riggs. I'm not sure what else you expected, detective. Ew, that's it? Did you have any thoughts about the murder? If you ask me, it's one of those actors. Or that horrible painter. Their type is always the cause of violence. So you're just speculating out of your ass, that's cool. Never mind. Good luck catching the murderer, detective. Did super mutants decorate this place? Quiet Piper. In fact, you know, I told my work wife about you. I told her that you and her basically have the same personality. And you know what she said? Oh, well, I'm gonna... I'm gonna be here for Halloween next year. And I'm like, no. I mean, yes, it would be nice. But I know for a fact, as soon as she comes in with that Piper outfit, that's it. Game over. Game changer. Whoa! What is this? This is nice! A full-on beach! Oh, okay. I gotta talk to... Gilda. Well, now, if it isn't the brave detective, I haven't seen someone with a body like that in far, far too long. Um, excuse me, ma'am? Um... Thanks. I, I suppose. Uh, I had some questions about the case. Surely you'd prefer to hear some tales from my storied acting career rather than talk about some dreadful murder. All right. Did you know that while filming Night of the Fishman's Return, Cynthia Marsh had the most terrible allergic reaction to the fishman suit? More than half the scenes had to be done with her stunt double, and that stunt double ended up having an affair with her co-star. Wow. Did you need something else? Tell me about yourself. My favorite subject. <laughs> Simply put, darling, I'm the greatest actress in the world. When this international scuffle blows over, I shall return to the silver screen and lead the world to a new golden age of cinema. Did you need something else? I don't know, did you need anything from me since I can tell you are so fucking thirsty for me with the amount of staring you're doing? I found Keith's baseball bat at the scene of the murder. Any thoughts on how it got there? I don't know, detective. I can't really imagine Keith killing Ezra. Did you need something else? I've gotten the impression you've had an affair. With Santiago. Look, I love Keith, I do. But sometimes he just can't give me the attention I need. Mm -hmm. The girl gets lonely, detective. Make her you're a it cheater. Only lasted a few dozen years. The man's a bit much, even for me. Did you need something else? What were you and Keith talking about when I came in? Oh, that? We were rehearsing. Gotta stay sharp if we're going to rebuild Hollywood. But Keith always gets flustered when he's upset. Did you need something else? Apparently, Juliana had a big argument with Ezra a few days before he died. Did you happen to overhear any of the conversation? Oh, yes. I haven't seen a woman go off like that since Teresa Dubois fired her costume designer. But to get back to your question... It was fever pitch, detective. She had apparently gone to the overseer's office to check on the state of things and found it in horrible disrepair. 
But, and this is where it gets interesting, uh -huh. it sounded like she found something that really set her off. Couldn't hear what, though. Did you need something else? Did you have any thoughts about the murder? Well, it is a bit strange how obsessed Santiago has been with the murder. I mean, he's always been a bit obsessive, though. He did a whole series of paintings of me, hundreds, said I was his muse. It was flattering for a while, but the man is a bit much, even for me. Did you need something else? Never mind. I'll be around, languishing from your inattention. Wow, okay. That's, um, mm -mm. The fact that she was flirting with me, bro. Anyways, let me see. I already talked to all of the possible, possible suspects. So the only thing left for me to do would be to go to the overseer office. Now the question is, where is this overseer office again? Hold on. This is the residential stuff, right? Um, how do I get upstairs? Seriously, how? Poor Piper, she's just following me too. Hold on, maybe I can go up here. Okay, perfect. So where would the overseer office be? Up there? Oh, come on, really? I'm just trying to go to the overseer office. Windows covered. Ah, this must be the door. Ooh, that's uh, awkward if I say so myself. Nothing in here. Let me just uh, browse through. Nice bed. Horrible, horrible bathroom. Would not shit in here, even if I was paid to. Um, let me see. Look at my baby Piper with the computer. She's so fucking sexy, bro. Okay, um, baby, excuse me. I need to use this. Thank you. Okay. Huh. I see here there's a play tape. Progress on construction of the second wing of the vault is completely stalled. Once the premier area of the vault had been completed, funding seems to have been cut off. My supervisors have informed me that they haven't received payment from Mr. Parker, and vault yeah. Tech won't pay out of pocket to continue construction. I've repeatedly approached Ezra about the finances, but he keeps telling me that Mrs. Riggs hasn't transferred the funds. However, when I asked her, Juliana said that she had just given Ezra extra for the gold pane in the rooms. I've hired an investigator to look for signs of embezzlement in a few weeks. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Let me look through the notes quickly. This is completely unheard of. One of the subjects from testing group A is apparently a researcher for General Atomics on some sort of advanced robotics program. He and his wife have convinced the other members of Group A that, with the international situation becoming tense once again, the best chance to outlast a war is to have their brains inserted into these robots. And they're doing this voluntarily. It's absolutely insane. I've tried to convince my superiors that this will completely discount the test results, but they seem more intrigued by the idea than appalled. We received the activation notice from Vault Tech to begin the test, despite the second wing still being incomplete. However, when I attempted to trigger the recruitment protocol for Test Group B, the system informed me that I had been locked out. Someone from Test Group A seems to have overwritten the system to prevent the admittance of the local population of the island. 
They've been pounding on the door for days, and there is nothing I can do. Oh my god, that is so heartbreaking and scary. Oh god, it's been weeks now, and I realized today that I've become the test subject. Instead of testing the social interactions between the locals and this group of rich assholes, it's just me trapped in here with them. They're going to live forever, and I have to deal with them for the rest of my life. I can't take it. Oh wow, he died of insanity. Because of these people. Fault 118 is designed to test the social interactions between the working class and ultra-wealthy when under confined conditions. Working in conjunction with staff from the Cliff's Edge Hotel, this vault shall function as a luxury hotel to attract the necessary testing subjects. Upon beginning the test, additional subjects shall be admitted from the local population into a second, much inferior wing of the vault. Prior to experiment activation, Vault 118 shall function as an ultra-elite hotel to attract test subjects of appropriate wealth and status. This shall be operated as clandestine area of the hotel to ensure that individuals drawn to privilege and exclusivity are present. Sorry, I tend to have a lazy mouth. Don't judge me. Upon activation notice from Vault Tech, the secondary wing of the vault shall be made open to the public and selected from the local working class of population. These subjects are to be taken through the exclusive areas of the vault on entry, but thereafter confined to cramped second wing. Once residents have been admitted, the vault is to be sealed until the test results can be determined. Test group A, Ultra Elite. This subject group, not to number more than 10, shall have their every desire attended to by robotic staff to the extent that is possible. They are considered to be above all legal restrictions when interacting with test group B. Test group B, Working Class. This subject group should begin num numbering 300 and shall be restricted to the second wing of the vault. Measures should be taken to ensure that living conditions are uncomfortable and cramped. Food and other rations are to be extremely limited and any breach of rules are to be judged by test group A and enacted by robotic staff members. Due to the potential for extreme social interactions, vault Tech staff shall be restricted to the overseer and key research members. All their security services and maintenance positions shall be filled by robotic staff to ensure safety and test compliance. Sounds like Ezra was embezzling from his investors. The fact that the Vault 118 was a testing social playground is disgusting. Purely disgusting. Let me go through my, um, my little data here. So I have to investigate Juliana again, Santiago, and Keith. Because for some reason, some shady shit is happening. And I will definitely get to the bottom of that. That's... A definite. So let me talk to Santiago, see what he thinks of this. My fellow connoisseur of the art, here to see my latest worm. Never mind. Okay. Um, I'll talk to her again, see if there's like new dialogue for me to pick up on. Detective, did you have a question about the heinous murder? There's evidence Ezra was embezzling from his investors. Oh, well, I really don't believe that. Mr. Parker wouldn't do such a thing, I'm sure. Never mind. Good luck catching the murderer, detective. I don't know, your tone. Your tone is like... throwing me off. The, the way you said good luck, it's pretty, um... Uh, shoots be shoots, if you ask me. 
Alright, so where is this fool here? Ah. Let me go ahead and just ask him. Hello, detective. How can I help? Did you have questions about the case? Never mind. Okay. Just let me know how I can help. I don't know. What sh what wait, what should I do? Hold on. Find and accuse the killer. You know what? I'm gonna accuse, see what he Hello, says. Detective. How can I help? Did you have questions about the case? Depending on his response would tell me if he's the killer or not. I think you're the murderer. The brain enclosure was smashed in and your bat was at the scene of the crime. What? That makes no sense at all. What motive would I possibly have to kill Ezra? Maybe you can give me a reason it couldn't be you. I... I... I would never harm Ezra, Detective. Okay. I was... in love with him. Oh, wow. Tell me about you and Ezra. Oh, God, I don't know. When we first met him, he was just so mysterious and exciting. It seemed like he had been everywhere and done everything. I convinced Gilda that we should invest in the hotel so I could stay close to him. But he never seemed to realize how I felt. I mean, we spent time together. Going hunting, having drinks, talking about his plans for the hotel. He must have known, but he never said anything. Do you have any idea what it's like to pine for someone for 200 years, Detective? Tell me about yourself. We went over this before, Detective. There's no motive. I don't know yet, but I'll find the motive. No, you won't, detective. Because there isn't one. Damn, Keith, okay, look at you being sure. He's like, no, you won't. Because there is no motive. Dun, dun, dun. I can't believe he was in love with Azra. Okay, let me talk to Santiago, see what he says. My fellow connoisseur of the art. Here to see my latest work. Wait, it doesn't give me the option to say, hey, you're the killer. So I'm gonna walk away. So my sec my third option would be to tell Juliana, hey bitch, Hello, you killed him. Did you have a question about the heinous murder? Juliana, you killed him. I think you're the real murderer. <laughs> That's just silly, detective. Why would I want to kill Mr. Parker? Ezra was embezzling your money. That's why you killed him and framed Keith. You why am I talking like that? so close, detective. It's a shame. <gasps> I thought I could keep the ruse going a little longer. Oh, um, no. Well, had to end eventually, I suppose. This doesn't have to end in more violence detective just walk away no i'll leave and you can tell them i escaped ezra you're alive well, that means juliana's congratulations dead congratulations on catching up detective yes i've been masquerading as juliana for some time now What's it going to be, detective? Join me in getting rich or die defending some outdated ideals? Why did you kill Juliana? I hadn't planned on it, but Juliana figured out what I was doing and had to be dealt with swiftly. I thought I could get a bit more money out of this place before making my escape. Well, how is this going to go down? This is so fucking freaky. And you know why I realized that scientist, uh, Bert, did say that the module, the vocal module, can mimic human voices. So that definitely was a foreshadowing. Not a chance. Your murder spree stops here. Then... Let us end this. Oh lord, I gotta kill him. Whoa! Fucking whore! That's right, baby. Kick his ass. 
Whoop his ass. And you know what? I'm using the minigun for this. Get back here, you fucking whore. Shit. What? Oh! Oh shit, everyone's in on it. Oh. Oh, everyone's in on it. Look, everyone's jumping him. Yo, I gotta see this shit. Move out the way. Okay. Alright, we need to go to Maxwell now since, you know. Um, oh, he's here. Nice. Maxwell, wait! Come back! I found the killer. It was Ezra. He killed Juliana and took her place to hide his tracks. My word! I never thought Mr. Parker was capable of something like this. What happened when you confronted him? Turns out, Robo Brains can eat. And I served him up a heap in helping it justice. Well, bravo, I suppose. There you are, detective. Payment for your services and a bonus for uncovering such a heinous plot. I don't think we could have done it without you. Pre-war money, 400? Bro, this money ain't shit anymore. Mm. Mm. I just realized all of these earl, earl, earls, right? These urns, fuck me. These urns are full of um, formal dead animals. Sir Cattenton, Missy the First, Missy the Fourth, Mr. Purrs. Pepper the second. I'm roaming with my own pre-war relic. Mm, come here, baby. I, I see I see you flirting with me. What you want, baby girl? What you want? I'ma sit right next to you. Oh, honey. Hey. Hmm? Piper. Are you hungry? These always keep me going. See, this is what I like about you, Piper. You always give me some little um um, um, okay, sorry. I got distracted. I like how you always give me some stuff. It's cute. Your thoughts? Nat always said I was the lucky one. Seems this was right. Oh my god, it's so cute. I was just wondering where you and I stand. Honestly, there's no place I'd rather be right now than by your side. Oh my god, now we kiss. Anyways. That's all for now. All right. Thank you so much for watching. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.